Hello my soccer universe, 9 out of 10 matches for Euro qualifying are in the books and many 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 teams are already qualified, There's only a few spots left on the upcoming 3 match days and unfortunately by the time this video posts uh, one more team will for sure have qualified either Serbia or Montenegro because scheduling for me on the Sunday qualifying uh, slot is always a little bit of a bitch to me because there's some early kickoffs and I never get it done. Add to it that I was down with COVID for most of the week and I'm still on the recovery side. Uh, that slows the process down as well. So yeah, there you go. You also can hear my voice is not quite there yet either. But all fine. I'll be all fine for this video. Um, I have followed a lot of European qualifiers uh, this uh, week so far and the interesting part is you might be suckered into some matches that might look good on paper but have nothing to do with the qualifying process and are not really uh, you know, tense games. However, if you look a little bit closer in the interstates and you know who is battling against whom, you might find yourself watching, like me, matches that you probably would not have picked. Albania uh, at Moldova, for instance, but that were really, really interesting. And that's the fun of this latter stage, stage where when you pick out exactly these games where there's really something to play for. And I don't regret making any single one of these choices because I always was uh, rewarded. And a similar goes for probably the last match, although there are only a few uh, matches left that are true standouts, admittedly today also. Uh, not that many great matches, but there's always a little angle that, that you can find and UEFA provided us with such an angle because uh, I think it went a little bit under the radar, although in, in Austria itself it became a big theme already ahead of the Belgium match that, you know, seeding for the Euro in the pots depends on how well you're doing qualifying, meaning uh, the best five group winners join Germany in group pot one then the next the other group winners go in pot two the best group winner a group runner up goes also in pot two and so on and so forth which makes it kind of interesting however as we will see I personally think while well, Austria has a decent chance to end up in pot two it may not be the worst to actually be in pot three but we'll talk about that as well the way I want to go about things is now not go uh, match day by match day and, and so on, but I really want to go group by group that we can look at the situation. Uh, I mean, most groups are already fully decided, but they are, you know, to uh, see how, if the decision came about, how this came about, and then also uh, look at the situation going forward, how it is. And alphabetically, of course, we'll start in Group A. We already knew that Spain and Scotland are through there, uh, but there is... For Scotland, they also had this chance to at least become the best runner-up, whereas Spain uh, probably, as we will see, uh, will land in the uh, top group because they had overall a really good qualifying campaign with only one loss. That actually gets you uh, done quite nicely. Uh, the fates of the teams were actually quite different in, in, in Spain. got a really, really easy 3-1 win in Cyprus, whereas... Georgia and especially Quetzalcoatlus Kelia ran riot over Scotland. Scotland having to equalize twice the last one coming late, late, late into stoppage time. Um, and that was actually kind of a little bit the um, result that Austria wanted to get that they lose points because that means that Austria has a chance for being the best runner up again with the caveat. Do you really need that? Group B happened yesterday uh, and the major uh, portion was will the Netherlands qualify? Yes, they qualified. It was a wild way for solo early, early on. Wasteful with chances the Dutch were, especially in the first half, but also in the second. I mean, uh, that they did not win by more uh, was almost a farce. The other thing is that the, uh, the Irish actually scored a goal that was then offside because it was clearly behind the line. It was kind of coming out of nowhere, but it's exactly what would, would have happened. Um, and no, none, none of the teams would be happy because uh, the way the playoffs set it up, it was actually better for the Irish to lose to the Netherlands because that would then force Greece into the playoffs, uh, which then also will help Ireland, although I don't think that Ireland will actually really make it into the playoffs either. So uh, that is there. However, then the big result is France against Gibraltar. 14-0. The highest ever win for France. 
in qualifying, the highest ever European qualifying win. 14 nothing 7 nil at, at the half. I mean, uh, it was definitely held that Gibraltar had a player sent off. Um, and for us, we're running up the, up the score and we're going for it. And I have, I have to say, I mean, I did not watch this game. I barely watched highlights. I have to say, uh, if you're going to play against such a ball, I know I don't like watching such routes, but if you go, then go full on and see where they can get double digit or more or something crazy. And it went. Uh, what was also not, not, but there were not many uh, players in there that scored multiple goals. It was uh, Kilian scoring three, of course. There was Coman getting two. And there was Giroud with the last two goals they do getting two. But uh, the Brett, there was an own goal in there. You know, every, everything in there. But showed also the depth of the French squad. Watch out for France. But uh, who am I telling that we all know that France is one of the top favorites for the upcoming years with a very cool jersey to boot. Group C is a really, really interesting one uh, because of the runner-up spot. Um, and yes, England, Tony over Malta, we don't need to talk about that one. Was, that's not how you play against the Mino. However, Italy against North Macedonia, it was not a must win for it Italy because we have always come down to the head-to-head -head between Italy and Ukraine. However, winning it would allow Italy uh, a draw and then they would win it based on the head-to-head. And so the win they got, um, and it was actually a really good first half per per performance. I remember I was watching with my daughter here, uh, and I explained to her a little, a little bit that uh, North Macedonia is going to be uh, defending deep, and Italy needs to try to break them down to try kind of take them out, uh, making some quick changes, or try to go past the man. And at first it didn't work, but it started, started working, and they very quickly got the lead through Darmian. Jorginho misses a penalty. I know Spalletti wanted him to take that penalty, but honestly, I think Jorginho and penalties, that's a story that is, should be buried, to be honest. I feel bad for, for the guy because he such a, was such a great penalty taker ever since the Wembley in, 20, in, in 21. He cannot get a uh, penalty for Italy in, and even more so, I mean, if he converts at least one of the two penalties against Switzerland, Italy is at the World Cup. So uh, that's, a, that's a big one, but I think he should not take penalty penalties anymore if, he, if he's playing. But then Chiesa from far range and then uh, scores another one, really showing that Italy is on a different level and they can play really exciting. They cannot defend though. And Mar Macedonia quickly pulled one back and then they got another one, a deflected shot from Acerbi. And I'm thinking, oh no, is Italy throwing away this one again? No, at least they scored two more late, late on. I think Italy should make it out of this group. But again, they have the head-to-head. -head. It's an away game, but it's an away game with Leverkusen. And Leverkusen, last time I looked, is not in Ukraine. So it might work in their favor, but you have to keep your nerves at bay. But at least you can get a draw of that. An old Italy team, I would have no trouble with that because it will would be nil-nil written over. This Italy team, I think, can be gotten at. That also has to be, and I have to say... Uh, the story of maybe Italy making it, uh, or, or Ukraine may be making it, despite all the war effort. I mean, there, there is a story there as well that uh, you would not mind cheering for them. Let's move over to uh, Croatia's group. Uh, D. Croatia got a huge shot, shot in the arm yes, yesterday. Um, said it already in a short vi video. Armenia had so many chances against Wales, scored very, very early on. I think hit the vault work uh, and then an own goal is an equalizer when Wales was not even threatening. Of course, in the second half, Wales opens up, creates pressure, but they are open like crazy and Armenia probably should, should have scored a second goal and won this one even. Uh, interesting enough, Wales have never won, uh, at least in Armenia, if not overall against Armenia. So this was never being an easy one. So with that result, a win for Croatia would put them in the driver's seat for qualifying. And that's exactly what they got. They got the tunnel against Latvia, Lov, Romaya, uh, being involved in both of the goals. Very early, early on, then Croatia settled it. It all comes down to their final game where they just need to have a win. Uh, and it looks good, whereas uh, Wales have to play against Turkey. So uh, it's Croatia against Armenia home game. That should be doable. And even if not, I think that Turkey and Wales, Wales at home probably will beat Turkey because Turkey don't, don't have much to play for. But again, should be very much a doable uh, thing. Group E actually was about to get wide open, out of nowhere all, all, almost. And I have been really not looking much at Moldova, who had a, have a really excellent record. They only have lost once. 
so far and were very well in the running and they were playing at home to Albania and while now it looks like they have no chance they actually had a chance Albania took the early lead but Moldova especially the more that the game uh, went, went on were threatening a threat a threatening should have scored uh, equal as much sooner than they did they were pushing for a winner a winner that would have uh, put uh, Moldova within touching distance of Albania and Albania would not, not have qualified. The draw was enough for all, all Albania and they have qual qualified. But if Moldova would, would have won that, that one, that group would have been wide, wide, wide open. And so uh, Moldova is still not out of it. However, Poland are at least out of direct qualification. They have to go through the playoff route now because they cannot win against the Czechs. Well, I should not say it this way, because this is a Czech team that is, is much more seasoned than I think this Polish team. Uh, Poland has maybe better star players, but I think as a team, I would prefer the Czechs any time of, uh, of the day. Uh, Poland took to lead, although I think the Czechs held them very well at bay, were maybe even a bit more threatening, although having less ch ch chances, the Czechs uh, through Suchik quickly equalized after the half and had them the better chances. How Suchik then uh, suffered a foul where he was lying on the floor and uh, got the foot. I mean, it was not on purpose, but I, I really wondered why this is no, no other red, red card. But especially late on when Poland was kind of desperately finding, uh, trying to find a winner, which they needed. Uh, the Czechs had actually really good chances, probably should have won the one. The last header off went to Poland. If they would have won it, Poland would have been very well into it. So um, the Czechs were probably all right with the 1-1. One -one. Because now all they need is a home win, uh, uh, avoid defeat against Moldova at home. Which they probably should do. But it's also a dangerous uh, position. And as I said, Poland has already done. Uh, have to hope for the playoffs. And we'll look at their playoff part too. Group F was already decided. Uh, it was only for first place and maybe for Austria. You know, Austria had a shot, potential shot at being in first place. For that, you needed to win in Estonia. Estonia had a really great chance early on. However, then uh, a really nice goal by Lima, very nicely played. Uh, made, made it one over one nil, and then. Um, I think Linhardt scores his first for us, Austria and Alaba corner. The game was done and dusted, 2 0, horrible pitch, blah, blah, blah. So you kept your shot at the number one spot alive. Uh, however, Belgium now has have a home game um, against Azerbaijan, which they probably will win. Uh, but you know, at least you give, give yourself a shot. You could have given yourself a better shot to finish as the best runner-up by scoring more goals, which Coach Ranik then uh, bemoaned a little bit. But on the other side, as I said, not sure if pot two is actually the pot that you really want to be in. Again, I keep this as a teaser out there. However, the big result was Azerbaijan against Sweden. This Swedish team is atrocious. Absolutely atrocious at the moment. What happened to Sweden? And they don't have bad players. It's just that this team cannot play at the moment. Uh, two nil down already after 10 minutes and then conceding a wide range shot from far out later on. Uh, that group might have looked tricky with Sweden being in there, but honestly, Sweden never was really an opponent. Yes, they had a few threatening phases against Austria here and there, but overall Austria controlled them very well and won fully deservedly both games. Has to have to have so Austria, Belgium, the class of their groups and one of the best qualifying records for both of them overall. Uh, let's go over to Group G, which is the one uh, Hungary. That was also a story. Uh, Hungary needed a draw in Bulgaria in a game that was almost not being played. First it was in Sofia, but then there are protests against uh, Federation President Mihailov. Where the police said in Sofia we cannot police this, um, so let's go to Plovdiv. Promised the stadium in Plovdiv was not or not radio is still under concern, so that even you know it was it would have been even dangerous for for the players. So they were almost about to cancel that that game, which would have handed the win to uh, Hungary, but also had major ramifications for Bulgaria. And last second it was uh, said to be played in Sofia again, but without um, spectators, didn't matter, uh, still the, the, the downtown Sofia had to be shut down because of all the protests happening there. Uh, Bulgarian football is in a really, really bad mom moment and, uh, you know, 
having ties to Bulgaria, it really hurts to see that because uh, that is a nation that should deserve much, 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 much better. But corruption and so on is, is a big issue there. However, uh, having said that the Bulgaria actually played well, yes, they were 1-1 one, one and down, but they got themselves big back in the game. It was 2-1 uh, deep in, in, in the stoppage time when a freak on goal gave Hungary the draw and the ticket to Germany. Uh, Montenegro also kept the hopes alive with a 2-0 over Lithuania and it's now the last match, match between uh, Serbia and Montenegro. Serbia playing Bulgaria and I think uh, Montenegro have to play against Hungary of who will get the last spot with Serbia having very much the inside track there. This is what you probably will uh, already know by the time this video posts. Uh, Group H is another one that is now, um, you know, had, had has a first decision. Denmark for a while looked like they're shaky qualifying, but uh, results have been going their way for now. Uh, they get a 2-1 win over Slovenia, which was a head-to-head. -head. Um, Slovenia being the second-place team, still are the second-place team. Um, Denmark doing just what they need, 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 need to do, get, get it, get it a goal. Slovenia scored a beautiful equalizer, um, but you know, in the end, a win is a win. And you survive a group, a group that you were a little bit shaky, but in, in the end, it's Denmark. I mean, Denmark is the, clearly the best team in India. Finland, although looking really good for a while, are already out of it. Uh, but it's between uh, Slovenia and Kazakhstan now. Kazakhstan team, they got a win over San, San Marino, and now they have a head-to-head -head and Slovenia need to avoid defeat. But, you know, Kazakhstan and Finland might still go into the playoffs and do something there. So have that in mind for them. Uh, group I. There we have to talk, talk a little bit more because that was the group where all the Israel games last time around had to be postponed. And yeah, uh, the makeup games didn't necessarily go East Israel's way. First they lose to Kosovo. That was last. That was a week ago. Um, one, one nil, which clearly hampered their, their um, chances. Then they are down to Switzerland 1 0. A win would have qualified Swiss. Switzerland and Weissmann very late on gets an equalizer. So Israel is still in the running. And yesterday they actually looked good. They had the head to head with Romania, a Romania team that had taken the lead in, in the group thanks to Switzerland not winning. Uh, and Israel were down within two minutes uh, through Sahavi after corner. However, Romania quickly can e e equalize. And then you can see that Romania just a the teeny bit better team overall and they get also the winner and it was also desperation time for Israel. I knew that the moment that Israel had to play four games in the space of a little bit more than, than a week it's gonna be a hard road for them and the Kosovo loss definitely did not help them. Uh, Switzerland also uh, dropped more points and while Switzerland has not lost a single game uh, this qualification event, this has been a rumbling and stumbling campaign overall with four wins and five uh, draws and you know Two of those wins came, of course, against Andorra. Uh, not a great record for the for, for, for Swiss, who might actually, as we will see, end, end up in pot four if uh, they don't win this group. 1-1 one, one against Kosovo. Yes, Kosovo uh, will not have no chances to go into playoffs, but yeah, not much to play for. And then we'll end it in Group J. Uh, Portugal were already through. Yes, Cristiano scored another goal. Great for him. Uh, it was only a 2 0 win uh, in Liechtenstein. Uh, it was way more exciting. Look, 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 4 1 over Bosnia. Uh, and it's so fun for funny because uh, all the teams behind Slovakia also already qualified or have now secured qual qualification with the 4 2 over Iceland. But all the other teams will very likely be in the playoffs as, as well. So this is a really playoff heavy group. Um, but yeah, it's about positions there. As, as you see, uh, Slovakia are now through for two over Iceland. Uh, they, last time they made it by, by, by the playoffs, did this time di 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 directly. And given that they started in pot five, it's ac actually pretty good showing by them. And as I said, Luxembourg, Iceland, Bosnia, probably in the playoffs. And if we look now at the playoffs uh, here below, you actually see already that... Uh, uh, the League A playoff, this is where Estonia will come in. We have Poland, uh, Estonia, Wales and Iceland. There might be a draw, but this is if the CC ceiling will go. You would think that probably Poland and Wales will play for that spot. I would not normally say Poland, but you know, I'm um, not quite sure. Uh, the B playoff has been rather, rather stable. Uh, you know, Israel and Bosnia, yes, uh, it, uh, you know, if Italy... 
uh, if Ukraine qualified and Italy go up, same thing as if Wales, there could be Croatia in there. So, you know, there are still some permutations uh, possible, but this seems to be the most likely thing. Uh, Israel, Ukraine, Bosnia has, has, has to go in Finland. Quite an interesting one where I think Ukraine is probably the strongest team in there. The most exciting one should be the C1, Georgia, Luxembourg, Greece and Kazakhstan. I would say Greece coming out of that one, but I think Georgia, Luxembourg, Kazakhstan, those are all dangerous. This is actually a little bit more wide open than one would hope for. Now, I've already teased it a little bit. We need to also look at the rankings of the group winners and the runners up and we have it here. You see that at the moment Austria is actually in pot one, but you know, uh, there's an eight in front of them, meaning uh, that's the only team that has stuff to lose because they cannot add to the tally anymore. It's more likely that Austria will then fall into the into the, the runs of better have a good chance if you look at their record it's 19 points scotland 16 points is the only team that can catch them uh scotland in the two goal win then they are the best runner up if belgium you know and the same thing goes for Bel Bel belgium but uh pot one you know there's germany portugal france england are pretty safe i would say spain is also relatively safe in in, in there and then there's probably a shot for uh if austria should fall out that either belgium will probably be in in there turkey denmark outside chances you see pot two at the moment the way it's made up turkey denmark hungary albania romania and then as i said probably austria or Scotland. Yes, they are all kind of the same type, but when I looked at uh, what world is in three, you have Netherlands, Croatia, Italy, Serbia, Slovakia. I mean, uh, Slovakia is not is not a, is a team that probably would want to play, but the rest, pot three, probably better to be in pot three, if you like. And I'm really surprised to see the Swiss. Slovenia checks already in pot four. So really, really interesting stuff there as well. Having said that, let's look also at winners and losers, big winners, I'm wearing them, are Romania, Croatia got a huge shot, directed uh, Wales, of course, in, in the other way, Italy, boost, um, we have uh, Swiss, Swiss and through Moldova, actually also improved the chance of qualifying, as kind of the Kazakhs and, uh, and the Czechs overall. And then we look forward also to the favorites for the Tour tournament, we have France, England, Belgium, Portugal, Spain. Germany, it's right there. I don't think the Netherlands will go in there or even uh, Italy. But, you know, we have said that before, that like the last Euros, Italy were not in the top five favorites and they ended up winning it. Uh, but I have to say the form of the Italian team back then was a whole lot better than it was now. Uh, as for matches, as I said for Sunday, yes, I mean, I think everything for Group G, the top games are in the in interest. The rest is kind of more or less academic. And not much more. The scotland Norway game. Norway cannot do anything anymore. It's only Scotland need to get the two goals if they want to be in pot two. They can actually decide, do we want to be in pot two or pot three? That's a good pole position, but that's maybe the most in interesting thing there. Uh, way more on uh, Monday, Ukraine, Italy, Ukraine, Italy, but also Czech Republic, Moldova. Don't overlook that one. Um, and then we have Slovenia against Kazakhstan. So there are three finals. And I have to pick between two. That's not fair. Uh, I think they should move one of those matches to today, honestly. And then, yeah, it's also a little bit of a downer uh, for uh, the Tuesday. Maybe I'll watch Austria's friendly with Germany, a Germany team that lost to the Turkey at home. Maybe I don't like to watch friendlies, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's the Croatia uh, and Wales games that I think are the most interesting. Croatia, Armenia, Wales, Turkey. Take your pick there. I still managed to make a long video, video but yeah, uh, the Euros are entering the final place. We have the draw on the 2nd of December already, so we'll know a whole lot more very soon. In any case, if thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let, let me know how you like the chances of your team qualifying, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!